All right, so thank you all for joining us today for our weekly archaeology and preservation webinar series. This series is going to be running all the way to Labor Day, so I hope you can continue to join us each Wednesday at noon for a new webinar. Uh, we have a lot of exciting topics coming up, and you can see the full schedule on our website. The link is there, and I will also post the link in the chat window so you don't have to type it all out. My name is Erica Duvick, and I will be your moderator for today. Uh, before we get started, I just have a couple of housekeeping items. First, if you have a question for our panelists during the presentation, please use the Q&A box rather than the chat box so your question doesn't get lost in any conversations. Uh, second, I will be here to help with any technical issues you may have, so please do use the chat box if you have a technical question. Uh, just send me a message and I'll be happy to help you as best I can. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Today we have the State Historical Funds Outreach Team members, Megan and Sarah. These are usually the first people you're going to talk to if you are interested in applying for a State Historical Fund grant. And they can also answer pretty much any question you might have about the program. So they are the reason, that's the reason we invited them here today to tell us about the State Historical Fund. So I will now turn it over to them. All right. Uh, thanks, Erica. Um, my name is Sarah Dahl. Uh, thanks, everyone, for joining us today. Um, we're just going to go through some of our success stories um, that we've had over our 30-year run as a program. Um, as you know, a lot of our focus is in rural Colorado communities, um, and we feel like that pertains to a lot of um, our participants today. So uh, your presenters will be myself, Sarah, and Megan Eflin, um, who you will hear from here shortly. Uh, so most of you probably are familiar with um, our program, SHF, uh, short for State Historical Fund. Um, if not, a little brief intro overview of us. Um, we are a state program uh, funded through limited stakes gaming from the three gaming towns, Black Hawk, Cripple Creek, and Central City. Uh, the program um, uh, was put in place 30 years ago, and since then we have awarded over uh, 3 million um, in grants in that time. Um, we are a grant funding program uh, that we do both competitive and non-competitive grants. Um, for more details on those, uh, you'll certainly want to contact uh, staff at SHF. Um, and then all of our projects uh, have a preservation component and they either relate to archaeology or the built environment. Uh, so the best way way to get started um, is contacting staff. So like Erica alluded to, you want to contact um, Megan or myself, kind of depending on where you're located. So um, Megan's region is the Western Slope, uh, mine is the Eastern Plains, um, and then we kind of split along I-25. So um, if you contact one of us, we can certainly uh, set you up with the correct um, individual. Uh, so we fund all sorts of projects uh, from survey to signage. Um, we've had some pretty great projects, uh, quite the um, variety. So if you think you have a one-of-a-kind project, um, just contact us and we will uh, see if maybe we can help with a very similar project we funded in the past or kind of guide you on the direction that you need to move forward with your project. So our first, our first example um, is the City of Wellington survey. Uh, this was a grant that was awarded in 2016 uh, to complete a survey of the original part of downtown. Um, these are just a few shots of the um, downtown area. Um, so you can see that they have a variety of different resources. Um, 25 properties were surveyed in all. Uh, they, the hope is for um, this survey to help guide future preservation needs and revitalizations in the um, efforts in the downtown. Um, the surveys help to determine any state and national 
uh, register eligibility, uh, architectural style, um, integrity of those buildings since a lot have undergone changes over the years, um, the construction date, and also the original use of the property. Uh, so this grant uh, was in total of $19,740, so it wasn't a very large grant, um, but still it made quite the um, difference for the direction that Wellington is going to move and provides valuable um, information. Uh, the outcome is the huge um, outreach that they were able to provide for those property owners, um, especially since majority of them would be that private owner um, occupation and ownership. Uh, so this is just their first step in fulfilling future preservation goals. And from here, they will probably um, talk more with the sur our survey specialists um, and maybe contact uh, Megan or myself on, um, on individual properties. Uh, our next one is the Hippodrome Theater. Um, a lot of historic downtowns have that one um, entertainment source, which is a, th a historic theater. Uh, we've done quite a bit um, of work with uh, various um, components of theaters. Um, the applicant for this one um, is the Hippodrome Arts Center, which is located in Julesburg, so way up in the uh, northeast uh, region of the state. Um, the property was became a state register, uh, listed in the state register in 1999. Uh, the building was built in 1919. Um, it's operated as a theater um, the whole time except for a short little stint in 96, um, but then was reopened in um, 97. Um, in 2000, uh, they did come to us for a historic structure assessment to be completed, uh, which helped provide a priority list of um, different features that needed to be um, addressed. So from a critical, um, severe to minor. Uh, then we have, um, they began um, various levels of rehabilitation to restore um, and rehab the theater back to um, what it originally looked like and um, to serve a more um, updated uh, purpose as a theater. Uh, so the project was completed in 2007 um, and the work consisted of uh, work on their uh, facades, uh, stabilization, um, roof rehabilitation, and interior space planning and design. Um, here you will see the restored front um, facade of the theater. Um, there have been um, various sponsor uh, stakeholders involved in that project in order to complete it. Uh, there were three grants awarded for a total of 192,618 of SHF funds um, grants and a project total of 224,568. Um, what makes this um, very much of a success story um, that holds a little, a soft spot in my, in my soul um, is that uh, they really were to go beyond just making it a theater. The building next door was, um, uh, was a, new, a new build um, with uh, DOLA and assistance as a partnering with the government entity. Um, to construct the building next door um, that now serves as a um, local artist's um, space in the front. And then in the back is a community center um, and kitchen. Uh, so that way it can be a multi-purpose. And then what's connecting um, the theater to this new building is an art and interior archway. Um, so it doesn't hinder the historic um, appearance of the theater, but it provides that dual um, usage, which um, a lot of small communities need to um, get the most out of um, their, their resources that they have. Um, Hi, and everyone. Next up is Megan. Hi everyone, this is Megan. Um, I'm gonna highlight 
some of our projects that have been a success over on the Western Slope. And I'm going to start with um, the Hutchinson Homestead. Um, for those of you who don't know where this is located, this is actually prominently on Highway 50 when, to, when you come in to Salida. So it is located in Chaffee uh, County. Um, the original homestead was uh, home settled in 1874, and the, it was put on the National Register in 1973, and is also recognized as a centennial farm. Um, the homestead was donated by the Hutchinson family to the town of Pagosa Springs, Pagosa Springs, or excuse me, Poncha Springs in 2002. Um, that is essentially when the project to re rehabilitate the uh, site started and um, they began with a historic structure assessment and a subsequent grant for design documents that was funded by SHF, so that happened in the early 2000s. And following that planning work, which really set them up for knowing what they needed to do with the, the actual physical work and restoration and rehabilitation work um, that needed to be done, they started um, a series of grants through SHF between 2003 and 2010 for the physical work to rehabilitate the site that included the main house, 10 outbuildings, um, ADA pathways, and uh, the restoration of the original fences, corrals, and gates. Um, once all that physical work was completed, they actually did come back to SHF for two additional grants um, that were awarded to the site for an interpretive plan um, for the learning center that the uh, site functions as now, as well as the creation of some K through 12 curriculum to coincide with um, your experience when you come to the learning center now. Um, in total, there were eight grants awarded to this site. Um, SHF's uh, contributions were $576,000 and the, the grant total uh, the grand project total was $884,000, which included that the cash match provided by the applicant. Um, there were some really great partners locally for this project, as you can see on the screen, and, as well as at the national level with the site receiving um, grants from the National Park Service. I believe it was the Save America's Treasures grant. Um, the fully re rehabilitated homestead is now used as a learning center that informs the public of the history of the site, as well as high altitude ranching in the area, along with highlights of the long, um, the overall, the entire preservation work that was completed from the beginning in the early 2000s until um, 2014 or so when the, uh, when the major work was completed on the, um, the site. And then the next project that I'm going to highlight is located up in Yampa, so in Route County. Um, this is um, the Crossens M&A Market. Uh, it was originally built in 1903 and served Yampa as a general store for 61 years before it was abandoned in 1964. Um, it was purchased by the town in 2006 with the vision of rehabilitating the building. And that is essentially when the project started. Um, by 2008, the building was listed on the Route County um, Register of Historic Properties, and in 2010, um, the applicant applied for and received an HSA funded by S uh, SHF. So again, some planning work, initial planning work on what needed to be done for the site um, to fully rehabilitate it for its future land uses. Um, in 2012, it was listed on the National Register as well as CPI's Endangered Places. So that helped further, um, you know, expose people to the, the project and, you know, again, help with um, maintaining um, additional partner and partners and interest in completing the overall project. Um, following those listings, the site received four grants from SHF for planning documents, as well as multiple phases of rehabilitation work. Um, the entire project was completed in 2018 and recently, um, earlier this year, it was um, awarded the Governor's Heart Award for its, um, for the entire preservation project. Um, the project, as I think this is actually a really excellent example of how to leverage numerous partners, including those at the local and state level to complete um, such a large project. So as you can see, there was a lot of local support for this project. Um, as well as Dola was involved and some larger funders like Gates Foundation. So they really were able to um, utilize all of their local support as well as um, other programs throughout the state. 
Uh, they received, as I said, four grants from, the, from S SHF, totaling about $600,000. Um, $600, and the total project for this was about $1.1 million, which also included that cash match provided by the applicant. And some of the cash match was actually raised through local bake sales. And there was a, kind of a fun fact, there were multiple Big Head Todd um, and the Monster fundraising concerts for this project. So that was pretty cool to see. Um, now it is used for um, the Yampa Town Hall, as well as a visitor center. And they do have a small, um, small museum exhibit inside showing the history of the area. So another great um, success story starting in the early 2000s and recently um, being completed. So that, um, that is the two projects that I want to highlight specifically. Uh, we have a couple other projects we kind of just wanted to show you kind of up and coming or um, new projects. So, um, so there are some ongoing and potential projects here, um, both that are both, um, well, all of them have strong partnerships both locally or at the state level. Um, Univista, in, um, they have recently completed surveying their historic downtown and received a second survey grant to document a historic re a residential neighborhood within the city. So that's a great ongoing project and we're excited to see what comes from all that survey work. Um, the Sedgwick County Depot, which is the photo in the upper right hand corner, um, this depot was saved from demolition in the 70s and it was moved 100 yards to its current location. It's county owned and they're converting it into a, re a regional mu museum. Currently they are working on their final phase of work and um, just one thing to note again, um, it's great to see people come back to us for projects and um, the contact for this project was also, and the person who's managing this project for the depot is also the same contact for the Hippodrome project, the Hippodrome Theater that Sarah highlighted just a little bit earlier. So we love to see people come back to us. Um, so that's great to be working with them again on another project in Julesburg. Um, in the lower left-hand corner, you'll see the Plaza Bach, which is one of the oldest buildings remaining um, in La Junta's downtown. The applicant worked with um, the Urban Renewal Authority to begin rehabilitating the project and eventually became um, owners of the buildings. And they are currently working on rehabilitating um, and it will be re rehabilitate, re, excuse me, rehabilitating the building and it will be used as a community gathering space and it will have a commercial kitchen on the first floor as well as apartment units on the second floor um, for people, for traveling nurses or other people um, who need housing. Um, another project that is a potential project that actually just applied in our most recent grant round, which is a great example of, again, um, partnerships through public entities and private owners, is the Montre Montrose Potato Grower Building. Um, that private owner public entity partnership is um, strong with this project, which is great to see. The building is locally designated, which qualifies it for um, SHF grants and uh, tax, tax credits. Um, City, the city is applying on behalf of the owner, which is um, not a common occurrence, but it shows really great support from the city that they believe in what this um, private owner is doing. And it's currently being reviewed by our board, so we wish it all the best success. And uh, they do hope to turn this into, um, I believe, a local um, eatery and distillery. So that is an, a great example as well. And then I think the, the next slide is really just for you guys, um, some, some additional helpful resources. If you guys are looking for in, information on anything that we talked about today, um, we have some, some listings here and we're happy to send this information to you if you'd like after the fact, we can give this to Erica, but we have some specifics on the State and National Register as well as where to find information on the Secretary of Interior Standards, um, which do apply to any physical work that we fund. Uh, we also have our main website here listed, as well as where you can find our application guidebook on our website, and then additional information for, um, for the tax credits program and how to contact um, our colleague who administers that program. And then we also threw um, some information in here for the Colorado C uh, Resource Center. CRC currently is doing some great um, virtual offer, or they're offering some really great um, virtual panel and roundtable meetings over the next couple of months that really focus on rural, the Rural Action Network and rural funding um, and development. So um, definitely a great opportunity to see um, what funders will be participating in those development roundtables and a great way to potentially talk one-on-one -on -one with not only us, we will be participating in August, 
but um, a lot of other fungers that would normally um, join the rural uh, philanthropy days that CRC puts on, but so they are offering these online panels. So definitely check that out. I know um, they st are starting those, uh, I believe next week and all the way into August. All right, uh, thanks, Megan. Um, do we have any questions, um, comments? Uh, Megan and I certainly can help me answer question, um, answer any of those um, that you might have. Um, and if we don't know the answer right now, then uh, we can certainly figure it out for you and um, reach out to you about. Don't forget everyone, you can use the Q&A box to ask your question, or if you would like to ask it live, you can also raise your hand, uh, which you can find in the participant window. Uh, yeah, we definitely can um, answer that. Uh, so the question is, um, how SHF can be used to archaeology in the state? Um, we actually have an archaeology specialist on our staff. Um, she's excellent. She does the outreach. She does the project management of it. Um, but some examples of projects that we've done, we've done a lot with uh, Crow Canyon out um, in Cortez. We've um, helped do different excavations across the state. Um, there's also the whole planning of um, that goes into before you would do, um, um, before you would just start digging in the ground and doing that excavation. Um, we have a lot of projects where um, we help um, categorize, um, categorize uh, catalog um, artifacts found at these sites. Um, and so then they can be properly stored and preserved for future um, researchers. Um, there's been a lot done uh, with the tribes. Um, we help with, um, we help um, coordinate and collaborate with the Office of Archaeology and Historic Preservation. Um, when it comes to talking about projects and working on um, tribal lands um, and making sure that that voice is also incorporated into any work that is done. Um, we always, um, we there's various um, projects, but for the Heart Awards, we always have a State Archaeologist Award. Um, and so this um, last year we had um, a couple of really good archaeology ones. Uh, we had one with Magic Mountain, um, where they did a public archaeology day. Um, and then we did Chimney Rock, which was um, a an completion of an ethnographic study. Um, so if you have an idea that you like, um, then you can certainly reach out to Megan or myself, and we can connect you with our um, archaeology specialist on staff. Um, Megan, do you want to add anything? No, um, no, I think that that was great, Sarah. I think, again, just if you have questions about whether or not it does qualify, um, reach out to us. We'll get you in touch with Katie, and we can definitely um, move forward with how we can um, help you with your project. Um, do you want to answer the next one? I think you've dealt more with old mines than I have on the Western. Um, yeah, so we do get requests to provide funding for old mines and mills. Um, we, I do have, we think we have some um, active projects actually currently down in the Silverton, Silverton area and have some actually ongoing conversations um, about some mills and mine 
in Mineral County. So we do get um, and have funded projects for old mine sites and mill sites. Um, our next question, um, some, sometimes developing successful partnerships to power a project to completion can be difficult. Are there any um, commonalities you see in successful partnerships and how to develop those? Um, a lot of times it's just kind of starting the process early. Um, so a lot of times um, applicants will run into the issue of not having um, their full cash match or not being sure that they can um, fully fund a project um, to completion. Uh, so we always recommend starting sooner rather than later. Um, a good time to talk to these other organizations is, um, Megan said, like role philanthropy days. So if you have an opportunity you need to go, um, you can pitch them your idea and they'll tell you, they'll give you a red light, yellow light, green light, um, and it's really awesome. And then once you make that connection with them, um, you build that relationship um, for maybe future projects. Um, and it's always um, good to um, contact staff um, because in a lot of instances we um, are more than happy to kind of give you an idea as to, well, these organizations are interested in like archaeology or these are kind of interested in building that education um, component of a project. So um, you kind of just need to, um, we work with you on a timeline so you can distinguish as to when you're doing your um, different phase of work um, as to when you might want to apply to these different organizations. Um, Megan, do you want to talk in the next grant round? Um, yeah, and I to kind of add a little bit to what Sarah was just saying with the last question, I also just recommend people just reaching out to their local res local community and resor um, resources, resources within their community. I think a lot of times people are unaware of what they have in their own community, so I think there's some great opportunities through the CLG program or even just through your own local preservation um, groups or commissions to see what else is available. And for example, up in Yampa County, there was a lot of local uh, grants received through um, just local agencies or companies. So I think kind of knowing, knowing a lot, um, knowing what you have locally and also just really educating yourself about what's available um, statewide and, and really, really being able to labor, leverage and strategize what will work best um, for what types of funders. And again, Rural Philanthropy Days is a great way to reach out to people um, for, for Colorado specifically. Um, and then for next grant round, um, currently right now we have um, the next grant round being our October um, 1 deadline. So that uh, is in place and um, we will be turning our um, application live for everybody August 1st. And um, of course, draft, uh, draft season um, we're always offering draft review of any applications, so we always encourage folks to really um, utilize that service that staff provides, and we are happy to look at a, um, a draft anytime. Um, really, the deadline to keep in mind for drafts up for the upcoming October 1 round um, is going to be September 1 is really kind of the, the, dead, the big deadline for drafts. Um, so definitely um, use that service. If you have questions on how, to, how that all works, you know, you can reach out to Sarah and I. Um, and yeah, and, and, and then we will be, um, I think, putting out some information just about that grant round probably in the next couple of weeks. So um, be sure if you aren't on our um, mailing list, uh, you can definitely let Erica or myself or Sarah know and we'd be happy to add you. Uh, so we will have some email um, marketing going out just about that grant round and the future upcoming changes for SHF um, coming in 2021. Um, and the picture you're looking at, I do believe it is McElmo Flume, um, which was recently completed uh, in this past year. And it was part of a um, larger um, 
national recognition on a national level for the um, National Scenic um, Byways uh, for the Trail of the Ancients. Um, ancients. Um, so it looks great um, and um, it's just one, it's another one of our successful projects that we've um, been a part of in the years. Um, if there are no more questions or comments, um, um, then uh, you can certainly uh, reach out to um, Megan and I, um, and we can connect you with um, the other staff, or we can help um, with additional information. So um, I do believe Erica will have this slide. Uh, show available um, to you, but um, you can contact us anytime. Uh, thank you, and I hope you all have a great 4th of July. All right, thank you all for coming. And yes, this uh, webinar will be available on YouTube in the next uh, week or so. Uh, and if you missed any of our previous webinars, you can also watch those on YouTube. Those are available at that same link I already posted in the chat. Hope everyone has a great afternoon.